Today, I have with me a special guest, Dr. Stephen Lane, who you may remember from previous videos a while back. Now, I've got Slane on the channel because Slane has just finished the Mali Blast 1000 kilometer gravel event. Now, I have the time here, 53 hours, 43 minutes for 1017 kilometers. Now, in real terms or easier terms to interpret, Friday, 7.30 a.m., you started riding your bike yeah. from Torquay and you finished 1 p.m. on Sunday and you had 45 minutes sleep. That's what weekends are for. You just ride your bike, isn't it? <sighs> oh, with it, Phenomenal. Without stopping. So, first of all, before we get stuck into the technology and the gadgets, how are you doing? How's the recovery? I'm all right. So, what, it's been today's three or four days later. It's Thursday. I was a today, zombie yeah. for a couple of days. Just It was kind of like I was on a big bender weekend, I suppose. Um, head's getting better. Bum's not too bad. <laughs> Surprisingly, bum wasn't too bad at the end anyway. Hands get numb from just rough gravel roads, on a nerve compression. You kind of get numb fingers. So this was a gravel event. This wasn't on tarmac. So a thousand kilometers on... a bit on... of mix, but it was probably 75% gravel. Now, you did a video on your bike, top to bottom, on your channel, which I'll link to in the video description below, where you yep. covered everything. But as I said today, we're going to focus on the technology. And none of this really let you down? Or none of what we have here let you down? No, everything worked a treat. I had a little problem with the maps on the Garmin, but I think that was my fault from loading the map. Not quite right. You'd All be right. surprised. A route that long, a thousand kilometers loaded on as a route, mm -hmm. can have some problems. There's a few things you've got to make sure you do to make sure it fits within the file size sort of thing. Excellent, now these are the tips that I want to discuss today. So hopefully we're gonna whip through all of this. We'll pick up a few things along the way, but we can't cover it all. There is a, we've had many, many hours of conversations about the ride, uh, from the mental aspect, the training, the entertainment, the safety. Got to, the, I think we should open that up to a live Q&A or something like that later on, because there's, bikepacking's the new there's bike lot. stuff, it's kinda, there's lots to learn, and that's yeah. that's what I like. So let's focus on the technology. So let's go top to bottom, technology that you have here, but also on the bike. Now we'll kick off the group set on the bike that you're using. Did you choose to go mechanical, which you can fix out on the road, or electronic group set on your yeah, bike? Yeah, I'm, I'm risky. I run the electronics. I had DI2, Dura shifters, mm -hmm. XTR rear derailleur, um, one by um, on the front with a 42 tooth um, wolf tooth chain ring. Mm -hmm. um, what was on the back, 42 tooth cassette okay um what else was on there that's about it gear wise okay and any issues with the di2 over the 54 hours uh, only when i hit a massive pothole and somehow i unplugged the whole front left hand shifter folded in and it unplugged the cable which took me a little while to figure out what was going on but otherwise no i trusted the battery but really it's only the battery mm -hmm. is it going to last that long i think it's still got 90 percent left it's flat roads you're not changing gears heaps i knew i was okay yep Alrighty, so DI2 uh, with a mixed mixture of road and mountain bike up the back, so the XDR. With the yeah, so what do you call yeah. it? It's the Shimano mullet, I suppose. Smullet. Smullet. We'll call it the smullet. <laughs> okay, so that's the bike itself. Also on the bike, the power meter. I'm all about power meter. You've got to have your numbers. Slain, you're a, Me a, too. a coach. You've got, you've, you want to see the numbers. Um, now, when I was looking at your Strava ride, we had about 10 hours of data and then about 40 hours of not much. Can you explain what was going on there? Well, uh, yeah, look, I've got... On my bike, I've got a set of Cane Creek cranks and a direct mount chain ring, so I run power pedals. So mm -hmm. I've got the SRM X power pedals. Mm -hmm. They're really good, except the battery life isn't real flash. About eight hours is all I get. They pair up Bluetooth. I'm not real sure if it, sh it can pair up Amp Plus, and maybe that would extend it. Mm -hmm. But on a Garmin, I can only get it to pair up Bluetooth. Eight hours battery life is all I get, which isn't real flash, sadly. It's a common issue reported with the SRM X powers. Uh, I believe they have addressed this a little bit, but I think there's a long way to go, especially for an event like this. I wouldn't call it being out of its depth, but it was definitely taking a knife to a gunfight. Yeah, or as I've ninety percent of people yeah. probably an eight hour battery life is kind of okay if you charge it after each ride. But comparatively mm -hmm. to other power meters, what thirty hours, hundred hours? Yeah, you're looking Eight's at really what good. 150 from the uh, Rally XCs. You're looking yeah. at, I think off the top of my head, um, for Veros, if you do the SPD hack on those, you're looking at at least 50 to 55 hours of continual use. Uh, eight hours is not in the ballpark at all. So, no. so SRM, mm, if you can help me out with that or solve the problem, I'd love to hear from it. That's one the engineers need to be looking at. Okay, so power meter aside, so we have heart rate, but I don't know, two didn't you? Have yeah, a heart rate was that a Wahoo yep. ticker? 
a, a brand new one because I actually wasn't sure. How long do batteries last in heart rate monitors? Like hundreds of hours, but... I think they rate them on months. Yeah. Not well, hours. So I had a brand new one because I didn't want it yep. to go flat because I knew the power meter was going to go flat. I needed some metric to Google over later on. So. Right. Now, that all goes to do your head unit. But before we get to the head unit, uh, more importantly, the satellite tracking... So for these events, yeah, you so this have... is the fancy stuff that yeah. normal cyclists don't really deal with. So we run a little Garmin InReach Mini, is what I use. The other one they use a lot is a Spot Tracker. I think mm -hmm. it's up to a Spot Gen Four, but I like the InReach Mini. This pairs up with the phone. If I don't have um, cellular reception, mm -hmm. I can still send messages via the satellite, which is the Iridium network, off a Garmin InReach Mini. Super good. It's not about you. Sometimes it's about yeah. your partner being worried about you going out in the middle of nowhere. I was dot tracking. I, was, I wanted to see where you were. <laughs> yeah, so the purpose of these is when you sign up for the event, we sign up to a site called Map Progress, and you can see where each individual who's doing the race. There was like 80 people, I I'll think, put, doing this I'll put the video one. on screen here. Yeah, it's of, a cool little video. You'll see where Slane is on you can, compared you to You can pack. see where people are. So the yep. dot watchers at home mm -hmm. can see how the race is panning out. It pings about every 10 minutes, so it updates each 10 minutes. You yep. can set that to, if you want better battery life, you can push that out to 30 if you really want. Right, okay. So when you're out of cell reception, that's the answer right there. Now you yep. pair that so to So it's got, a, got an SOS button on the side. Yep. So when you hit that SOS button, if that's you've broken one. yourself, mm -hmm. helicopters and all sorts of things turn up. Or in so, Australia, to be a ute with some dingoes in the back and some yeah. fosters. Um, <laughs> that'll fix you. Okay, so that gets you connectivity out of band of a cell network. Do you have the inReach paired to your Garmin head unit? Uh, I don't, but it can. Okay. I think one of the more recent updates for the Garmin, I use a 1030 plus. Yep. Um, I think if people send you messages onto this, mm -hmm. um, it shows up on the head unit. Okay, so there's a pairing there that you can do between yeah, that. But, because GPS units, you've got a GPS unit, which effectively is your head unit, but also GPS or satellite tracking, which is two-way data communication with satellites. So yeah, that's correct. that's a subscription service too for the inReach. Yep, so that has a monthly subscription. I think Aussie it wise. costs me about 40 bucks a month. Yep. I'm lazy and I think I can cancel it if I'm not using it, but I just let it run all year. If I'm out, usually I'm by myself and I'm out in the middle of nowhere, I have this going. I think I've emailed you yes. my my link, link. Yep. so you can see on a web page where I am. Yep. So if my mother calls you and says, "Have you seen Stephen?" You can go, "Oh, hang on. If he's on a ride and we can't find him, maybe we can find him." Yep. So that's sort of peace of mind. Okay, that's thing. new to me. I've not played with those. I am keen on those. The rides I do are usually within cell reception. But as you said, it's not about you sometimes, it's about others uh, and having access to where you are. Yep. Um, interesting stuff. Now, so side note onto the head unit that you were using, you mentioned it was an Edge 1030 Plus. Yep. There's a few tricks with that to make it last over the 54 hour. Yeah, so battery save mode. For bike packing, it's, it's kind of weird. They use these other ones called an E-Trex. There's a very few different types. I've heard interesting stories about E-Trex. They look, look like an old 705. I call it an Atari. It's kind of <laughs> like, it's go. super, uh, super simple. But look, it is good for navigation. It actually takes AA batteries. Okay. So, so if you're yeah. doing a crazy race like the Tour Divide in America that's like 4,000 kilometers or something, it might take you a couple of weeks at least. Yeah. You can stop at a store, double grab some double A batteries and replace it. Yep. For a two day event, for me, a Garmin like this is perfect. Mm -hmm. On battery save mode, this nearly got me through 50 hours. Whew. And that's recording heart rate, recording power. I was using it for well, power navigation. For ten, 10 hours. What's that? Power, power for 10, 10 hours, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and for, the main thing is the navigation. Yep. So the maps are loaded on this mm -hmm. um, and it, the screen goes blank in battery save mode, still records, but it will, when there's a turn coming up, mm -hmm. I think I've got it set to 50 meters before okay. the corner, yep. the screen will flash up, say, hey, turn left. Yep. So it helps, then it goes black again. So it's pretty handy. Um, but yeah, that battery life is pretty fancy. Battery right save right? mode. When you said you were getting it through the full thing or very close to it with battery save mode, it's not something that I've used. Um, actually, funnily enough, I did today because as we rolled out for yeah, our two yeah. hour ride, which Slane still put me to the sword. Would you use 3% over two hours? Yeah, it was 12 or 13% on one of my head units. I'm like, oh, I need this data to record, but I don't necessarily need to see what was on the screen. That was the 5.30 or the 8.30 I had. I uh, put it to battery save mode. It pretty much went to sleep, or the screen went to sleep, recorded all my data just fine and used next to, yeah, three or 4% of battery. 
phenomenal. Uh, not that great if you want to look down at your data all the time, but you can have the alerts set to different things to pop up on screen. I'll tell you what's next. Brilliant. The Garmin Phoenix Solar mm -hmm. with its solar thing in the back. On Maybe my... they can charge a head unit. There we go. Sadly, this doesn't charge very much off well, solar. So the, Well, the screen size on that is a lot bigger than what we have bigger. in our watches. Yeah. So solar yeah. panels behind Garmin screens. Did you just leak the Edge 1040? Ooh. I've not heard a thing about the Edge 1040, I'm guessing, but we can clickbait that, couldn't we? Anyhow, okay, so Edge 1030 uh, Plus with the battery save mode on yep. 48 hours. Now, so you had the E-Trex, uh, that was the 32X as backup, but not used. Yeah, so, I lent it to somebody else, so I've used yep. it before in different events, but oh, yep. I didn't have it with me this time. But you can't rely on these things working for the entire duration of the event. So let's go talk about your batteries, your power banks, and a few tricks with those. What did you carry on the bike for charge, and did you have a Dynamo Hub? Uh, no, so on, so on the bike I ran, it was my standard 700C gravel bike. Um, yep. I don't have a Dynamo Hub in it. I do on my dedicated sort of bike pack uh, mountain bike. Mm -hmm. um, so on this one, my lights had to last me two full nights. Sort of, that's what I predicted. Now, this time of year, what's a full night that you needed lights from? That's probably uh, 8 p.m. till... 8.30 until 6 in the morning. Okay, yep, I think that's important because so nights can like, last twice as long. 10 hours? Yeah, something like that. Quick math, yep. Yep. So, and I rode through the night, like I was riding at night time the whole time. So my main light I had is a Glowworm, I think it's an XS model. Right. Um, it's a big one. So it uses, uh, I've got two battery packs for it. I've got a big four cell battery pack mm -hmm. and I've got a two cell battery pack. The one four cell battery pack lasted me pretty much through both nights with the light on low. Right. So when you're not going really fast, or down rocky descents and stuff, you can afford to run your light on a pretty dim setting. Yep. Um, and it lasts like, yeah, ages. I think midway through the second night, I switched to the two cell battery when I saw this one was getting low. Yep. Um, I had with me backups. I wasn't sure if that was gonna last the whole time, whether mm -hmm. I was gonna need it on a higher setting or not. So my backup lights are two exposure lights. I've got an exposure Diablo mm -hmm. and an exposure joystick. They're pretty good, they've got multiple settings. It's actually got listed on it how long it lasts depending upon what setting you've got it okay. on. Yep. Um, I've got one of those, I've got a clip on the helmet so it can go on the helmet or on the bars. Um, and then my backups, but I didn't even turn either of these things on on the ride. Right. If it's a techie trail, I might often put that on the helmet because mm -hmm. as you turn your head through a corner and things, it actually yep. the light follows it. When yep. it's on your handlebars, you can't, your field of vision other than straight ahead is not real flash. Yep. So didn't use them, but had them on as backup. And I'd always take at least one of them with me as a backup because right. I've been on a ride at nighttime before in the high country and it was nearly snowing. And I went to turn one of those on and it didn't work. <laughs> Navigating with the flashlight on your iPhone is not recommended. <laughs> Oh, desperate measures. Uh, but closely related to lights is also your battery packs. These things here. Um, three battery packs? I bought three of them with me. Yep. yep. So I knew the Garmin was going to need a top up. I knew my right. phone was going to need a top up. Yes. I tend to ride with my phone on aeroplane mode and flick it off aeroplane mode when I want to, you know, I'm on Instagram, I'm doing a few <laughs> things, doing mm -hmm. some stories. I'm checking that map progress to see how my lead is versus the people Competition. behind me. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Um, so I've got three battery packs. I've got heaps of battery packs. I've tried a bunch of them. The newest one is an Anka 10,000 milliamp battery pack. It's good because it has a USB-C and is fast charge. Right. So if you do stop at a motel for the night, this thing will fully charge in, I think, under three hours. Um, I'm not really fussed about how fast it charges devices because I'm just cruising around and I've got all day to charge things. Yep. Um, these charge off my Dynamo hub if I'm on my other bike as well, but it pretty much takes all day for a Dynamo hub to charge. One so it does things. a trickle charge. Now, is there any difference between the Anchor ones and the other ones here? Uh, these ones have, so the next one down, which is a standard old, is it Signet? They're pretty common, those ones. Yep. It's a 10,000 milliamp as well, but it's just got two standard USB outputs. Yep. One's a fast charge, I think, a bit higher amps than the other one. Yep. Nothing special about it. Um, and the last one's this fancy little uh, stainless steel one is BioLite, and I think it's a 5200 amp hour. Um, nothing special again. So the difference between battery banks mm -hmm. when you're bike packing, 
the Dynamo Hub if you are trying to charge your Garmin or power your Garmin directly. Yep. On a Dynamo Hub, if you slow down, the charge stops. So what we use is a buffer battery. Mm -hmm. So some of these need, for a battery pack, you need through charge. Yes. Uh, I think the, all three of these actually have through charge. So it means that means this is charging at the same time as it's outputting to a device. Right, yep. So it's a buffer storage to keep a Garmin charging continually. Yep. Otherwise, when you stop with a Dynamo Hub trying to charge a Garmin or, a, or your phone, the Garmin keeps beeping at you going, external, this, external, external power, power loss, loss yep, yep. which drives you crazy. So right. you need a buffer battery that works properly for that. Buffer battery, okay. Again, something else we've discussed in detail that I wasn't even aware of. The but, other uh, thing yeah. is uh, things like, I think the E-Trex, mm -hmm. or maybe even the Garmin on battery save mode, the power draw on them is really low. Yep. And the battery banks will turn off if they're not getting enough current drawn from them. So it doesn't think it's charging anything, so it'll yeah. turn itself off. Yeah. Right. So yeah. some yeah. of them don't. I'm actually not real good on that side of things, yep. but some of them are good and some of them are bad for that situation. Something to do a dry run with, I guess, before taking off, because the last thing you want to do is a, a, an adventure of discovery two or three hours into a ride. Where the last don't thing you want is your Garmin beeping at you going, power okay. disconnected. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And your mobile phone. So that was the uh, iPhone? Yeah, I don't even know what model it is. It's not the new one. 12. It's still working. With a quad lock case, those things are great. There we Just go, put them in the here. Handlebars. Yep. Doesn't go anywhere. And that was your backup navigation unit yeah, as well? Yeah, so my get navigation stuffed up at the halfway mark. Only 500 k's to go. Yeah, only 500 k's to go. In the dark. With lots of turns. <laughs> um, I use Ride with GPS, mm -hmm. and I had the route downloaded on my phone on that. Right. And from then on, I had to pretty much use my phone to navigate following the line on Ride with GPS on a downloaded maps file. Right. GPX or what format do you, is there any certain format for longer rides you need to export in? Oh, I think it's a GPX file. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So the longer the file, if you've got a massive file, mm -hmm. some head units don't like that many data points. Yep. So there are options saying export as 500 uh, data points. Okay. Yep. Um, you start to get not really tight tracks on the on the roads. It mm -hmm. might kind of be off a bit. Yep. So you've got to when you're playing these big long games, you've actually got to make sure you look at the route that you've loaded onto something to make sure it hasn't cut corners and missed tracks and well, stuff. Well, something these engineers need to look into. Uh, so first of all, the solar charging on head units would be very interesting, except at night, that really won't work. But <laughs> though in Australia, it's usually so hot at night, it'll probably charge anyway. Um, thermal charging, there we go. Um, and longer routes. So now these garments have a high capacity. Um, they've got a lot more storage on them in memory space. They should be looking at extending those uh, features out to have more waypoints throughout the whole routes, especially people doing gravel routes. It's getting more and more popular. So, yeah. Excellent. All right, there's a coverage. Quick rip through. Okay, Slane, one last question not related to technology, though, before we leave today. What saddle would you use for 54 hours of riding? <laughs> uh, a Pro Stealth is what I use. I've never had a problem with it. Okay. Um, amazingly, everything down there is okay. So, so the saddles are very personal things as well, but for you, that works. Uh, with, what width? You're only a small dude. 143, 143. Yep, okay. I think it's all about how good your chamois is mm -hmm. and lots of handfuls of chamois cream. Unbelievable. All righty, we'll leave it there for today for the technology side of things. If you have any questions for Slane, put them in the comments below. As I said, we've had hours and hours of discussion here. Slane's up for a visit this weekend. And uh, there's just so many things we can talk about for this ride. As I said earlier on, from the mental side, the training side, the competition side, preparation side. I'll put links below to Slane's bike coverage. This is sort of skimmed across the top of the bike gadget and technology he's used, but there is so much more. So if you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. We may be back with a QA. and a You up for that? That'd be cool, I reckon. We're up for it. But I think in the meantime, Slane, you need to catch up on some sleep. Oh, I've had, I've had plenty of sleep now. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching, Slane. Thanks for coming on, and we'll see you soon. See you, folks. I didn't tell Slane that was about a 25% uh, I thought I was in the pinch. Big dog, but it was still halfway down the cassette. You are the big dog. You've only got a big dog. Oh, I'm glad that's over. Whew.